Hello and welcome to another Miniature Realms uh, video, I'm continuing with the very recent um, Epic Battles American Civil War theme. Um, I've, sure, I've shared quite a few um, pictures of my painted miniatures on, on some groups and on this channel as well and a few people have asked for a tutorial. Um, so that's what I'm going to aim to do today. Um, so I'm going to show you how I've painted the Confederates. Um, and then a later video, or hopefully I'll uh, show you how I do the a Union Army as well. Um, so the approach I'm, I'm using with Confederates is primarily a um, contrast, sort of Citadel contrast paint based system um, over a Zenith or Highlight, which is what I'm going to show you now. So we have a, a primed first front rank of a stand here. Um, I keep the first and second ranks separate for painting, which I'm sure most people do as well. Um, and then I've primed using um, the Vallejo Black Surface Primer through my airbrush. Um, you could use a rattle can as well, and you could do this process with a rattle can. It just gives me a little bit more control with the airbrush at this smaller scale. Um, I tend to use a rattle can when it's um, 28 mil scale for at least for black priming anyway. Um, and then for the Zenithal Prime, um, I'm going to be using the surface prime of the grey, um, still the layer as well. Um, and the, the plan, the idea, is to do a bit of a top down dusting. Um, just get my airbrush ready while I'm chatting away, it's just drying on the tip a little bit. To not completely obliterate the black prime. but just to give yourself something a little bit easier to get the colour to adhere to. And by leaving, by going in at this sort of angle, sort of mainly top down, this is quite heavy. Um, when I do 28 mil models, I sometimes leave a little bit more black showing. I want to make use of this, this grey as a bit of a base, as we'll see later. There we are, very roughly with the, the black prime first, followed by the grey. So you're still seeing some black through there, just giving you some natural shadow, which is perfect to use with, with contrast. Um, all of the, the original videos that, that Games Virtual put out for use of contrast paints was, was over one of their flat colours. And I think there was, um, it's like grey sear and wraith bone, and then they meant you know, the standard white as well. And, and, and they work perfectly fine. Um, but the, the larger the area that you do that over, the, um, the less definition you're going to get in the colour. So when you've got smaller models like this with, with, with lots of detail, that you can make use of the natural detail that's, that's there by, by leaving the shade in, which is, which is what you've got there with this kind of zenith or highlight. Now, I want to push this one stage further. Um, and um, because the models are so small, you could still lose some of that detail and you don't want to be painting it back on something that's, that's, that's this tiny. So the next stage really is to do um, a little bit of dry brushing. So what I'm going to do is just use model color white. Um, pretty much use any white you like, use your favorite. My favorite tends to be Vallejo whites um, for this kind of job. I use a lot of Vallejo, I use a lot of scale 75 paints. The, the, the scale stuff is, is better for different applications than this really. So Vallejo is the best. I tend to avoid Games Workshop whites. I find them very chalky and dry out. I don't like their blacks either really. So most people know how to dry brush and, and understand what dry brushing is. This isn't really a, a, a beginner's level painting video, though nothing, nothing I'm doing here is hard. But I'm not going to describe every single thing I do in great detail. If anyone really wants to know, then I'll obviously get in touch. But um, And there we are, all rough and ready and very rough. This is, um, I, I wouldn't normally dry brush anything quite as rough. Um, it, there's, it's breaking many of the rules of um, of good dry brush in there to do it that rough, but it, it works absolutely fine um, with the process we're going to use. So 
And what I'll do now is I'm just going to pop on the screen a little list of, of the colours and things that I use when I painted my first couple of regiments. Um, and that's going to be my guide now for um, for for the future um, regiments I do. Luckily with the Confederates, I suppose I can I can play around with them a little bit more than I would be able to with the Union. Um, you know, obviously we're much more uniform and much more likely to be be the same from one regiment to the next. I know there will be some differences, but um, so I, I kind of I keep notes on my phone. Um, it's all digitally linked, so it goes on my computer and stuff as well. Um, so I've always got access to them. I do it for my work. So every every client commission that I do, that I take a, a long series of notes and I post pictures and things in there. So should I need to go back and add more miniatures for a later date for them and things, I've got all the reference there. So I do the same for my own projects. Um, and I think I've already shared this image on a um, previous video. Uh, one of my hobby vlogs, I think. Um, but anyway, here's the here's here's a screenshot of, of my notes that I I took for the um, Confederates, and uh, you can see some of the colours that I've been using. Um, and it's just really time to crack on now and, and start applying uh, those colours. Um, I, th I think the first thing I'm doing is is going to be adding in the the trousers which is using Talisar Blue. So we'll, um, you, you can see me do a little bit of that now. And I'll show you as I start each stage, um, but I won't um, record it all or I'll speed it up. Um, I don't, don't want the video to be ridiculously long. I don't want it to take um, two hours for you to watch watch this. So I'm going to try and edit it down to make sure that it's something that you still learn anything you need to or take any tips away from whether you, that you'd like to, but don't have to be bored watching every brushstroke. <laughs> Now I've done the fronts of those. I think the rest I'm gonna do um, in, in different colors. So browns doesn't, in fact, I'm gonna add one more blue in. I don't want too much variation on this stand. I do love this color as well. And I'll be using the same on my Union troops for their trousers. It's probably not technically the right blue probably a bit bright in some ways but it just looks really good um rule of cool and all that right then so i'm going to flick them around and and do the backs um just be careful i'm sure it's pretty obvious but be careful that you're painting the backs of the blue on the ones you've already painted blue if you're doing confederates and you're mixing them up you don't want to uh pick the wrong man and then they have brown at the front and uh, and blue at the back <laughs> the blue done on those with leaving a couple free to maybe add a little, little bit of different color and things in so let's have a little look and we'll bring that little list of colors back up again and you can see what I've used so what sort of spot color so I've got a list of spot colors there so agarus dunes um, I could do gore, uh, gore grunt of fur um, could just go gray um, Something else I haven't listed on there with, with grey is, is actually using the apostrophe white. Um, so the way this works is you apply it over white and it basically produces your, your grey shadow. But if you use it on a, on a, on a model um, that's fairly flat coloured anyway, you actually 
go for a semi-decent grey so I can paint in it's a good way of touching up if you uh, want to keep the trousers grey and it just smooths over a little bit where where the pre-shape might not have fully covered so this one's going to be having grey trousers so I'm doing very little at all with this It does help a little bit. Um, we'll go for some Gore Grunter fur on one of them, which is quite a quite a strong brown. So I'll work with this. I could take a bit of this out and thin it on a palette. But as you've seen the way I work with the blue, it's quite nice to be able to work with it while it's still wet on the model. And because the model's small enough that your the surface area isn't too large, you've got time to work on it before it dries too much. It does dry quite quick, contrast paint. Um, like any paint, each one behaves slightly different to the other. Um, the different levels of pigment and things. So you have to get used to them. Some need to be thin more than others and it'll depend on the application, but they're definitely not the dumbed down paints that people often thought when they first came out. Not there for people who don't like, just don't like painting or just to get things done quickly. And they've got a variety of applications and you can. So I've just got a bit on the edge of the jacket there. So I'm gonna take that off. You can paint properly with them and uh, when you can't speak. When you've prepared models like this with appreciate, this is proper painting. Um, you can go on highlights afterwards, and and people wouldn't know uh, that there's been contrast paints used in, the, in as part of the process. It's definitely not the easy button, but um, as a tool, they work very well in this kind of application. Um, Which we go. Let's go from Agros Dunes. you want I'm, I'm not even looking at my list of previous things now because the joys of painting these confederates is you can really mix them up and pretty much anything from the the browns through to yellows so the ochre browns oranges any of that range from of contrast paints can be perfect for this and can be usable. So again, just a little bit off on the knee, just give you that natural highlight. Save your time, because you don't need to go back and necessarily add a highlight afterwards, um, which is what I'm trying to achieve, and that's my way of saving time with these. Now, I, this is a bit slower than I'd be doing. I'm leaning around a camera, um, and I would be batch painting, so I would have a whole regiment on the go, probably, and I'll be working my way along every stand, one by one. Um, just going along, pick a colour, go brown and go along all the way every maybe one on every stand or something like that one on every strip this stage is quite quick I think one of the slowest stages will be when you start getting into the smaller detail and you start doing your, your straps and things like that okay so there we are that's enough color added to the trousers. Everyone at this moment in time has a grey jacket. Um, now that wouldn't always be the way, so you, you, I might well put a brown jacket here or there on someone. Um, let's go for a contrast snake bite leather. <laughs> If 
we've got one there in, in snake bite um, let's give someone else a different color so let's try it's a uh, nasdaq yellow i've not used this one before but again as i just keep saying the the beauty of so i've not used it in, on this army the beauty of of doing the confederates and in with this scheme is you can kind of just dip in and out of of all these different colors and um, play around them and make them quite random <laughs> take away too much of the grey but I do probably want to do one more jacket that's uh, not quite right so I may go for a brown one so let's get back the wild wood um, it's quite a dark grey wild wood but it doesn't cover too thickly um, the cycle brown is very thickly pigmented and which is almost like a, a a regular paint it's so thick you have to you have to thin it quite a lot but the, the wildwood isn't too bad out the pot for this kind of thing so let's give this dude here a brown jacket and then the rest will leave as, as gray or they'll be too mismatch and as much as it may well have been mismatch at times you, you want to have something there that kind of looks like the the mental image people have of, of, of the confederates i suppose is this this still gray even though there wasn't maybe at times much actual gray I'm sure there'll be lots of people commenting on well this unit had this and this unit had that this is just generic they're not they're not designed to be any one particular at this point in time i think i'm going to do there's probably something for the vlog more but i think i will be painting up about half of the collection in just sort of in a, in a general way um, then after that point I'll do a little bit of research into some units that I know I definitely want to field and, and if they have any kind of special colours and things that I need to reproduce then I can make sure I target that okay so we have a brown jacket in there as well Um, and that will be it for the, as I say, for the colours. So that's trousers and, and, and jackets essentially done because I'm going to try and use the grey that's there from the pre-shade without doing anything else. Um, and then hats. Hats is uh, one of the next things. So not everyone is going to be wearing a grey hat. It's going to be black caps. It's going to be brown caps. It's going to be all kinds of different things. So I'm going to use some contrast basilic and grey. Um, And we'll go for the first one of these. Now this is quite a thin paint, so it won't darken it all that much. Another Gore Grunter, I think. <laughs> Tunes and this guy here can have that colour. 
he's very irregular. And the rest I'm going to leave as, as grey and then I'll do what I did with the grey trousers and just to soften some of those dry brushed bits a little bit. I use some of the Conquest Apoco 3 white stuff. Just we'll turn it down a little bit, soften where the, the dry brushing was and when it dries it will look grey rather than a dry brush model. <laughs> go along and do all the boots now because it's nice and quick and easy to do and this I'm not even going to worry as long as I don't go up onto the trousers I'm not even worried what happens below because that's all going to be painted into the base <laughs> That's a, I think, a good enough mix of uh, greys and, and yellows and browns, and uh, just to make them look like they're wearing a real mix of things. As the, uh, the back rank, which I've been doing off camera as well. Um, so the next stage is, is probably one of the most boring stages, and that is painting in your your kind of your webbing. Now, I've done this pretty much all with, with contrast black. Um, it's mostly because I think it sort of stands out on the scanner model. Um, I appreciate that they may have also been a real mix of, of different colors. So maybe, maybe would have been brown leathers and maybe some white leather as well. I think if you've, uh, maybe they've picked up a, uh, a Union Soldiers water bottle, uh, water canteen, and it would have, might have been in white, et cetera, et cetera. But, um, just for speed and ease, um, everything gets a black coat, um, including the little straps on the bedrolls. So I'll just paint those in as well. Um, I go over the belts, over the buckles at the moment. I'll go back and, and paint those in afterwards. But yeah, this is the most fiddly part of the process and I'm not going to make you watch it all because it's easy for me to do it when I'm not leaning past the camera and again it's not going to be very interesting for you to to watch this too much so I will cut back once it's all done okay so that's all the webbing and cross belts done um that's the the back rank there they start to come together now um it still looks pretty messy it's one of those things where it's kind of trust the process knowing that you're gonna you're gonna get to this in the end um, I'm gonna do the bed rolls now um, I used three colors before so I used actually used red um, on a few just to kind of add something a little bit of a color interest in there you know, someone's brought something from home um, so red I've got a um, Nasdaq yellow and Gorgrunt of fur again, which I've used for a number of times. So, I'm just gonna... So that's all of the bed rolls done in the colors that I showed you. I've, I've added a little bit of red and blue to the drum and I'll tidy that up later with some white, but it's uh, the Contrast Blood Angels and Contrast Ultramarines um, and a little bit of uh, Skeleton Horde just on the top of the drum. Um, 
so we're at a stage on this though they still look pretty messy um but they're the the main bulk of the the colors of the clothes down um what tidies it up now is when you start sort of finishing off the guns and then we'll we'll go in and do some tidying before we do the faces and beards and um, that really sort of brings it together now moving into the closing stages now in many ways um the weapons so i'm going to use the cryptep armor shade gloss um and i didn't use this before or i haven't used this before i saw it in the guide in war games illustrator um and it's just great over the over the pre-shaded and dry brushed whitish gray so go over fairly thick and i'll go in and pick out the the metals at the end So now we've um, added the cryptic armor shade to all of the weapons all over. Um, I'll pick out the bits that should be metal um, a little bit later. So the next thing to do now really is, is do the what I call the first sort of tidy up stage. Um, and that's, I'm actually using thinned, I've pre-thinned in here, gray sear base. Um, and I'm just going around anywhere that I've overspilled on hands and faces and things i'm just adding a bit of gray back because when i go and put the flesh in which is contrast um darko flesh um i want to make sure that it's visible and comes through well and if i've obviously covered it in a different color um you won't get the desired effect so it's just a, the first quick tidy up And then as before, if I see any areas that I think I've overspilled too much on, on, on gray, I can always try and touch that up as well if it's the right color at the time. So starting to do elements of highlighting as well. So while I'm doing this here at the moment, I've just added a bit of lighter gray to the cuff and to the epaulette of the officer and I'm just going to add a little bit onto his belt sash because I'm going to go over that in a moment probably in red or in yellow and if I just add a bit of colour to it it'll make it stand out a little bit brighter So <clears throat> here we are, flesh is on, dried, um, and it's just a tiny little tidy up now where it's dripped down a little bit too much. It doesn't matter too much if it's gone on the beards and things, but in order to get that really kind of strong effect, I just dropped a little bit on the drumstick there. In order to get that really strong effect from the contrast paint, I just wanted to brighten any beards and moustaches well. There we go, happy with that. So we are, we are ready for beards. So again, I think I'm going to go for a mix of, of colours. I think we're going to go for a gore grunter. Shall we give the officer? So I'm guessing as the only officer that's uh, represented in these regiments that we are looking at a colonel here. Uh, 
And I think this just is really when you add the skin and the and just get the facial hair right. And this is just when these models come to life. And this rather strange process of relying on essentially glazes or, or thick washes, um, which can look a little bit scruffy at times. Suddenly. suddenly starts to look like a set of models that's worth having on the table. I did worry about using so many of the same colours, especially all the, the, the use, heavy use of the browns mm. and ochres in their clothing and then doubling it up on the beards. Um, But it, it seems to work out okay. It might just be a bit smart where I place certain colours. So if I've got a that colour on a hat, don't don't put it on the beard on the same the same dude. Um, any more brown beards? Mm, we'll do this one. stage is very much um, um, to get the metals on and then they're practically done barring a little bit of tidying up. Obviously you can do more, you can do further highlighting but when you've got this amount of miniatures. Um, so I use a lot of scale 75 pens which I think I mentioned earlier in the in the recording. Um, their metallics are fantastic. now is with the grey sieve base again and a little bit of the graphite scale 75. I'm just tidying up any little bits of grey that just seem doesn't seem right so that there's too much highlight in one place or um, that is too flat. Um, it's just a little bit easier to, um, to go in and do this afterwards. This is just something as simple as lightening up a little patch on the shoulders. bit on the bottom of the coats there just a tiny bit more contrast in colour sorry and not not to be confused with contrast paints there but, um, so go along and a little tidy up there's not much needed to be honest with you I think the first set I did there was a little bit more needed than this They're all showing a decent amount of natural highlight and shadow on there anyway, so I'm relatively happy with that. Well, I'll go around and tidy all that up and, and, and save you the boredom of, of watching me do it, but you get the idea. Okay, so it's it's time for your for all the belt buckles and um basically just the belt buckles I suppose but and then we're, we're ready to move on to basing and adding flags and things um, so I'm going to use this um, one of my favorite colors scale 75 gold it's quite a desaturated gold um, I, I just I mean I could use a bronze I've got plenty of bronze colors but I think the actual effect on the models 
it looks more like a dull bronze than some of the bronze colours it, it just works quite nicely so if I find uh, we've got the belt buckle showing and we're just adding them in as you can see or hopefully see that it just on the model it just looks like the right kind of colour well I think it does anyway Okay, so we are now at stage of basing. So if, if, as I said before, I think the, the adding the flesh and then after that adding the metals just really kind of turns what is a, a bit of a mess of uh, washes and glazes essentially into something that, that looks like a, um, a painted miniature in this scale. I mean, we'll bear in mind the whole time that this is designed to be um, relatively quick and easy way of doing it. So what I do now is I cover my entire bases in petroleum grey. It's a um, um, it's another scale 75 colour. Um, I have it on hand, so I tend to use it a lot for this. Um, there are lots of colours in other ranges that will do it. Um, I, try, I don't know what the, the latest version would be in Games Workshop Sit or Paints, but there used to be a paint called Showing on Granite. They used to be a very similar kind of thing, but essentially you're looking at a browny, greeny, grey. Um, I find it's fairly neutral. Um, and the reason I use it is because it works very, very well with um, the Vallejo um, earth texture that I'm going to put on next, the European mud. There we have scale 75 petroleum grey on the basis. It's um, still a little bit tacky at the moment. And the base is completely painted. I'm painted enough anyway. And so is the, the edge of this one. Now there, you've got two options now. You can glue it straight on. Or you can try and get some earth texture, which is what I'm going to use next, in the middle. The problem I found with trying to put a layer of earth texture along here and then sticking the second row on was that it always get a little bit too much and then the second row wouldn't fit flat. So I'm going to glue it on and not worry too much about what's down in the middle there. So the next stage is to add the earth texture. Now there's not an awful lot of spare room on this base. So what my goal is is to sort of level off where the plastic base that is attached to the feet of the model is with the rest of the base. But then I'm not too worried about how thick it is over the rest. There's not much space on these bases, so it's not the best example of this. But because I've got the paint underneath it already, you can just be a little bit patchy. I'm just gonna shove a little bit down the middle, like I said, but not worry too much. So the next stage is good old Agrax Earthshade. So put a liberal amount of this all 
over and again I probably won't film all of this I'll probably just cut away and come back to you and it will be another period of drying time before we can move on to the next stage so right, for the next stage I'm actually going to use some pigments um, so some light center and nothing crazy with it I'm just going to brush some of it onto the earth areas and I just like what it does to the texture I think we're all very familiar with seeing texture by the sand and brown paint and then a wash put on top of it and it looks great but this just makes the ground look a bit, bit more realistic I'm going to blow most of it away I'm not going to use any pigment fixative or anything like that you can never truly fix pigment anyway um, unless you varnish it and then as soon as you varnish it you lose its properties you lose its you lose its colour a little bit in the middle there yeah, you get the idea I'm going to put a little bit more back in and this is more you actually rub it in the grain sticks in a bit more this is all very much extras this is just how I do this this is not what I'm suggesting that anyone else does there we go so it's just even that surface out a little bit it takes away some of the shine from the wash for me makes it look a little bit more like realistic uh, muddy ground um, and then the next stage is, is adding a few little spots of the Vallejo thick mud which I talked about earlier and I'll do that now and then it's tufts really and then edging the base and we're done well, apart from flags of course so this stuff if you can see actually looks like a wet mud which might seem a bit of a contradiction to me putting on this this kind of dry dusty stuff but when it dries um, it doesn't look quite as fresh unless you apply it very very thickly which I'm not here again I was just creating texture just creating variation rather than just a flat colour a lot of people are thinking this is an awful lot of stages for an inventory stand where you have I don't know hundreds of these stands potentially in the game um, when you're doing this as batch painting and you're not talking about it it's actually a lot quicker and um, I think the bases make us so much of the difference when it comes to the overall finishing effect of these right we're going to give that a couple of minutes to dry and then um, I'll take you through the tufts and what I do with those um, and then we're very close to completion so I'm currently using two sets of tufts for this army project um, I'm going to need to order some more um, I got these on eBay in the UK from War Paint Figures um, there's so many tufts and, and tough makers all around um, there there are some really really good ones and, um, some, and most of them are okay um, I've not really come across many bad ones these I think I'm very impressed with I think the important part for this project for me is that they were shorter so I've gone for, for the two millimeter um, tufts um, so this is winter on these I mean going by the names on things I don't always provide you with the best um, description there's still quite a lot of verdant green in those you could you know if you, you remove the, the name from it how would I describe them I probably wouldn't describe them as winter just means I think there's odd little bits of brown in but that's fine it gives me more variation but I do like these two colors um, most of these will be too big to go directly on those bases so I've been cutting them in half half a tuft on a base it seems to be perfect sometimes they don't stick because of the powders that are gone and then I'll pop some super glue on but these tufts are really quite good Here we are, 
so I've rimmed the edge of the base in Game Air Black. It's my go-to black for kind of standard things, even for painting with the hairy brush rather than the air airbrush. I just find it's um, it's really really good. Um, and I paint all my base rims black. It's just one of the things I like to do. Um, so the, the flags are on, they're not glued on. Um, I I'm actually glued them with super glue to stick them together um, rather than PVA. I do it a lot to speed it up, but PVA is probably the best thing. Um, it's a bit risky with super glue, but I leave it so that they're, you, you've got a, a recess so they can slide on and off. I won't do it here because I'll probably end up breaking one of the poles while leaning lean around on the camera. But I think for this project, um, I'm going to make up lots and lots of flags, which means I can kind of switch out some of the, the units that are dressed generically enough to be different units. Um, I think I said on one of my, my vlog videos, which if you're watching this, just people are finding this as a painting guide and are not sort of following the whole process of me building these these armies. Um, just, I'm going to have a large collection, probably a, a core's worth of, of um, regiments on each side, um, but it may well be the wrong core to do certain engagements. Um, so if I want to do Pickett's Charge, I may not have the, the, the same regiments that I may have needed included if I wanted to do some Western theatre or something like that. I know some regiments got moved from one brigade and one division and one corps to another, but being able to have the removable flags makes them quite um, flexible, I think. Obviously some things, you, if I paint up Louisiana Tiger Zoos as Louisiana Tiger Zoos, then that's all they're going to be really but you get the idea so final touches now final things i do with the flags is to make them look a little bit um more realistic is just try and cover some of the white area that you get once you've stuck your flags together so this is the iand and yellow contrast i'm just going to pop a little bit around the edge the flag where the white shows so this flag has got some trim on it so it's army of Norm northern virginia flag but i think it's the i can't remember what it said second version of it or something so someone's going to tell me that it's the wrong battle flag to go with the virginian state flag that i've got next to it now, like I said, I can pop them on and off and swap them over. The very first pictures I did of my painted units, one of these, I'd already made the flags up. Um, and I'd made the Union ones as well, the ones out of the War Games Illustrated magazine. And before the pictures, I wasn't looking what I was doing properly, and I popped on the, um, the northern state flags with the... Uh, confederate troops and only one person has, has commented that's not common occurrence on the internet um and also they popped off and i swapped them over straight away but i, I never retook those pictures and i think only one of the shots is really really very clear but um no doubt i will make some mistakes my, my knowledge of america's all isn't too bad but it's um more generalized top-down view and i know a little bit about the character of some of the generals and things. What I'm not an expert on is individual state regiment liveries and um, uniform things, so I need to do a bit more research when it comes to that. Got overview of war politics, um, campaigns and stuff I'm not too bad on. But when it comes to the real, that real detail stuff, um, definitely don't know as much as some other people I'm just going to catch the edge of this bit here on this one I think my cat's about to join us which is perfect so I rim the edges of those with colour often like to add a little bit of black in just to make them look a little bit more worn I'm going to try and do this on camera, but it's not always that easy. So I'll just add a little bit of black on the edges. Make them look like they're blackened by certain smoke from battle. This 
So again, this is contrast paint I'm using here, but you could use any paint really. I just want to give it a little bit of control. I'm watering this down a little bit once I've put it on. I just think that makes it look a little bit less paper flag like and a little bit more battle damaged. So here we are, the end of the video. Hopefully, it'll once edited, it will be a, a watchable length under an hour or so. Um, it definitely took me longer than it would take me if I was just painting this normally, leaning around a camera, breaking down each stage, thinking about it in that way. Um, if I was going to paint each one of these at this pace, I'd never get through them all. Um, I'm fairly happy with that way that looks for a gaming standard piece and for something of this scale and that's we got to bear in mind there are lots of little bits and i look at little bits of individual models and i think oh god um that looks scruffy i wish i didn't do that like that like i'm not maybe not a fan of both of these yellow jackets next to each other at the end that kind of thing but in the in the grand scheme of thousands and thousands of these individual men um it really really doesn't matter and the overall effect is, is quite is quite good i think um and i, I think contrast is fantastic for for, for these um, size models, it's a good way of picking up the detail. Um, I've, I've considered with the Union primarily doing airbrushing and then picking up the um, the blue lighter blue trousers afterwards and all the little details. I do take away then the the ability to let contrast do the work with the detail on the faces and things like that. And um, I'm not sure I'd want to go and then hand paint in the faces and beards in order to then use contrast and whether it get quite the same effect with that that is zenithal um, pre-highlight um, but hopefully you've enjoyed the video um, you know ask any questions and things in the comments below you know bear in mind this is supposed to be a, a gaming army a tabletop army so they're not perfect and this is a very small scale um, but um, I've had some fun doing it so thank you again for watching. Um, if you want to keep seeing what I, my progress for this this project, um, you know, give, subscribe away. Um, there will be stuff from other game systems and things on on this channel as well. It is um, a, an overall channel for it could could have literally anything on it. So it may not every system will be everyone's cup of tea. Um, but thank you very much for watching, and I will catch you soon.